Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. Wasn't that a beautiful uh, prelude for us this evening? Thank you, Nita. I'm so glad all of you came out here to hear me preach tonight. Oh, that wasn't it, huh? You're going you're gonna to see a wonderful program this evening. The kids are all prepared. And the focus of the program tonight is on the star that... Uh, that guided the people's way to, that, that introduced, was part of the introduction of Christ. And, and tonight we celebrate the incarnation of Jesus Christ almost 2,000 years ago. And I want to start with a few verses from a Psalm 148 tonight because we find that the star was proclaiming Christ, praising God. All of creation is meant to praise God. Psalm 148 tells us that the angels are to praise God. The heavenly hosts, the shining stars, the heavens, the waters, the sea creatures, lightning, rain, snow, clouds, wind, hail, mountains, hills, trees, animals, birds, and then it gets to us. Kings, nations, rulers, men, maidens, old men, young men, children, all to praise their God. I want to read those few verses from what Psalm 148. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and rulers of the earth, young men and maidens, old men and children, he has raised up for his people a horn, and we celebrate Jesus Christ, who is God's salvation. The praise of all his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart, praise the Lord. Let's pray. God, thank you for this gathering and this time to celebrate your incarnation. Thank you for each soul here precious in your sight. And we pray that, that you would touch our hearts as we lift our praise and thanksgiving to you tonight. Fill our hearts with your presence. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask you to stand as you're able and to pass the peace of Christ to one another, extend the love of Christ to one another. Welcome. Oh, don't sit down yet. <laughs> Once again, I invite you to stand as you are able. And in your bulletin, you will find the words to O Holy Night. And together, we're going to sing O Holy Night.
You may be seated. The prophet Isaiah foretold, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Tonight, we light the Christ candle. In the beauty and brightness of the flame, we remember the words of Jesus. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We also place the Mary symbol on our Advent banner. In humble obedience, Mary offered herself as the earthly vessel to bring the light of life into our sin-dark world. Let us pray. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lord Jesus, shine in our hearts. Let us reflect the blessed hope, peace, joy, love, and light of Christ in the world. Amen. Thank you, Bean family. I invite you to find uh, the prayer in your bulletin that we can join together. Would you please pray with me? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Then the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. O holy child of Bethlehem, you are the Word. You humbled yourself and descended to earth to save us from our sin. We have seen your glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. At this time, I'd like our ushers to come forward. We'll uh, take our offering now. We'll get that out of the way and be ready for those kids and their program.
Would you find number 249 in your red hymnals in the pews there? And we're going to sing, uh, there's a song in the air, verses 1 and 2, and you can remain seated while we sing this. Professor Starr has welcomed a new class of stars to the heavenly realms. She is excited to tell them the story of Christmas. Hear now, twinkle, twinkle, Christmas star. Welcome, Star Class of 2018. You're looking nice and bright this evening. Thank you, Old Star. I've been working on my shininess. I can see that. Well done. And this is a great night for us all to look our very best. Why is that? Because it is Christmas. Yay. Uh, what's Christmas? You don't know about Christmas? Oh, that's right. You're brand new stars. This is your very first Christmas. Is it your first Christmas too? <laughs> no, I've seen well over 2,000 of them. Wow, 2,000, is that a lot? Well, that all depends on your perspective. Let's just say I am old enough to tell you about the very first Christmas. And I can explain why we celebrate it, even after all these years. Would you tell us about it? It would be my honor to start with, we have to go back in time and visit a little place called Nazareth. Is Nazareth a place in the sky, no in space? No, it's a place down on the earth, on the itty bitty planet right down there. You mean the one over there by Jupiter? No, a little further to the right. Do you mean Pluto? I didn't think it was still a planet. <laughs> no, not Pluto. To the right. No, your other right. Oh, you mean the pretty little blue and green plant there between Mars and Venus? Exactly! And look, right over there, you gotta look closely. There is the town of Nazareth. Wow. Oh, who's that? That's Mary. She is a young woman 
who was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. And who's that? He's all shiny like us. That's Gabriel. He's an angel. He has come to talk to Mary. Let's do this. Everyone, turn to your history books, and we'll find out how the story continues. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked, how will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May it, to be, may it be to me as you have said, then the angel left her. And there's Joseph. Here's where a story hits a snag. Turn a few pages back into your history books to the first chapter of the book of Matthew, and we'll see what happens. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with the child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to the public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home to your wife, to be your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will be give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. All of this was done to fulfill the ancient prophecy which says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. What kind of name is that? Emmanuel means God with us, which is a very important part of the story. So is that it? Mary and Joseph have a baby boy, and they live happily ever after? You might think so, but you'd be wrong. They had to take a little side trip to Bethlehem. Let's go back to our history books and pick up where we left off. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who had pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Please uh, get your red hymnals out to page 230, O Little Town of Bethlehem, we're singing the first verse.
Is Bethlehem far away? How did they get there? It was probably a three days journey. They traveled by foot and donkey. No planes, trains, or minivans for them. I don't understand much about the census, but it sure seems rude to make people walk miles just to be counted. Yeah, rude. And remember, Mary was about to have a baby. It was a long, hard journey, and she must have been miserable. But that wasn't the worst part. Well, what happened? Since the town was packed full of travelers, there was no place for Mary and Joseph to stay. Every lodging place turned them away, all except... Except... An old innkeeper who let them have this stable out back. A stable? Isn't that where animals sleep? And eat? And poop? <laughs> yes. Yes, and yes. So Mary wrapped her baby boy in strips of warm cloth and laid him in one of the animal feed boxes. What other choice did she have? Say, would you like to take a peek into the stable and see how they are doing? Yeah. Please turn to page 217 and we'll sing together Away in the Manger, verse 1. Him Jesus, that's sweet. So when do we get to the part about decorating Christmas trees and opening presents? Well, there was no tree, but there was a Christmas star, and it was very important. Its job was to light the way to the baby Jesus. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up a bit. Class, turn your history book to the second chapter of Luke, and we'll continue the story. It gets really exciting! And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests. Please turn to number 238. Verses 1 and 3 of Angels We Have Heard on High.
When they had seen them, they spread the word concerning what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at, the, at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned, glorify, glor, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So that's the story of the first Christmas. Cool. Yes, way cool. But there's more to the story. Look! Over there in the east! Who are those guys? They are wise men from the eastern lands, stargazers who have seen signs in the sky leading them to a newborn king. You asked earlier about presents? Well, let's listen. We Three Kings, number 254. continue. Hey, where are they going? 
Bethlehem's over there. Hey, fellas, you're going the wrong way. The baby's over there. Don't worry. They are going to Jerusalem to look for the king of the Jews. But why? The baby is over there in Bethlehem in the stable. Since they were looking for a king, they figured he would be in a palace. Let's turn back to our history books to Matthew and see what it says about this interesting turn of events. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Judah, during the time of King Herod, Maggie from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod came, this he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judah, they replied, for this was the prophet has written, but you, Bethlehem and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. I get it. They followed the star and it led them right to Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And don't forget, they brought awesome presents. I think I would have bought I think I would have bought Jesus a Tonka truck. Well, actually, these gifts were the perfect presents for the little family. But that's a subject covered in the next year's lesson, so we'll leave it at that. Professor Starr, how do you know all this? Oh, I saw it all from up here in the sky. You see, I am the new star that appeared that night. Really? But you're so old. <laughs> well, so is the story of the of Christmas. Nevertheless, it is just as true today as it was on the very first Christmas many, many years ago. That's amazing. You know, I think we all shine a little brighter now that we know the story. New stars, it is our purpose to shine brightly. We were created and placed in the heavens to declare the glory of God. Listen to the words of King David. Hey, is that the same David who was related to Joseph? One and the same. Cool. The heavens declare the, the, the glory of God. The skies pro proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour for speech. Night and night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Wow, I like that guy. He sure has a way with words. Let's sing one last song about the Christmas star. It's about me, you know.
Did everybody get a candle? Anybody need one? Raise your hand and we'll make sure you get one. In a moment, we're going to pass the light of Christ. We're going to have our youth helping that, but I'll bring the light from the Christ candle, and then our youth will uh, go down the aisles and, and get your candles lit. And as we are lighting the candles, we're singing Silent Night, and you'll find those words on the back of your bulletin. Let's show our appreciation to the kids and all their helpers for proclaiming the story of Christ.
As we leave this place tonight, I invite you to receive this benediction from Philippians chapter 2. Please reach out and receive God's blessing. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Go now in the peace and the love of Christ to hold out the word of life. Shine as Christ stars. Amen. Once again, thank the kids. Kids got into it, huh?